have higher rates. Let's go to Mark in Colorado. Mark, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Good. Hey, wanted to look, have you look at this, um, one of these uh, Canada cannabis companies. I okay. picked up a position in Kronos, um, C-R-O-N, um, a few days back when um, it looks it was on the 10th when it was retesting the $9 level and yes. retesting like the 14th of September and the end of um, August um, candles. And so I've got a position in the, the mid nines um, and I was wondering what your thoughts are on it. Well, first of all, I, I looked at this the other day and I thought, well, peak D in the month, I'm sorry, peak D in the weekly, Peak D in the daily and leg D in the monthly, and yet the technicals are still holding pretty darn well. So when I saw that, I said to myself, oh, okay, keep an eye on these things now. Some of the very small, uh, we have someone in the den often to, uh, uh, um, post uh, the names, uh, five letter names that I've never seen before. And um, really, uh, the, those stocks have done fantastically well. Some of the bigger names, um, have struggled, but the one that's really, uh, the one that's really, I would say, the one that I watch and we've had before just briefly, and then I've just watched it instead, is GW, which is GW Pharmaceuticals, because I'm really looking to see which one of these, which one of these becomes the kind of the bellwether of the group, or the, the mature bellwether of the group. And if you look at CGC, which had a spectacular day yesterday, canopy growth, medical marijuana, it's uh, um, or cannabis, it's trading from the high this morning of 59, it's now down at 53. Hey, that's a big move, 11%. Now, so I'm I'm looking at Cronus and I'm saying, keep an eye on this one because it seems in a certain way to have a mind of its own, and I like that about a stock if you follow it for long enough. In other words, it doesn't follow the crowd. It'll join the crowd if the crowd is good, but it also has a way of independently moving in its own directional, uh, the way the rudder turns, and it just kind of follows that regardless of what the market's doing. So I like the fact that you got in, in towards 10, and today it hit uh, $13, and round number, and now it's pulled back. So you're in at a nice level. The, the trouble here is the speed with which they move. I don't have to tell you that. So yeah. this is what I'm going to say, Mark. <clears throat> I don't know if you have enough of a position here to attempt to try to keep a core position, but that core position, because it's already had a three-point gain, or let's just say a 2.5, let's call it a, an 18% gain, <clears throat> in just two days, I'm going to say to you, if you can keep your core position with a stop at your entry price and then have a trading part, I don't know what that trading part would be. I'd probably take the trading part at this point between a third and a half. So you only have a core half position as your, your, your major position. But that's this kind of stock. I don't think I want to be so fully invested that if something goes wrong, I've given back a, an 18% gain, just like that. So that's the reason why I'm just money management. So I'm going to say to you, 1167, the 120-minute chart has gone to an A, B, and it's not even a C yet. I like the 120-minute chart. I don't particularly like the speed with which this candle pulled back. But if today... Uh, C-R-O-N, Kronos Group, trading at 11.64, down 10 cents, is able to work its way from that sharp uh, open, gap up, and then sharp slide to the downside. I don't want to see a Roman candle here, candle here meaning that it closes at, at about 11.99 and higher, and then pulls back tomorrow. It will be a very positive action if it closes above 12 today, and I don't care what happens and what the reason is, if tomorrow it can pierce the 13 high, round number high, even by one penny, I'm going to say to you, that's the kind of action you want. It's going to now turn around instead of before. You see what happened all the way down through the middle of September into uh, middle of October. 
every opportunity you've made a lower low, a lower low, a lower low, and lower high, you want to reverse that process. Can you give me one, uh, uh, can you hold on? Uh, there's just one other aspect I wanted to talk about, talking about the weekly chart. Sure, fine. Okay, we've got Mark, all right, we'll right, be right back. Dow's a chapter I'm going to a bag, Dow's up 363, S&P's up 40, and we're on with Mark in Colorado. So Mark, I wanted to do a couple of things. I just wanted to show you that in, I, I thought um, my, this is with the Chapel Wave automatic projections here in Cronus. All oh, this is 10 minutes right here in the corner at the bottom on the left, daily right here on the left, middle is the weekly chart, on the right is the monthly, and in the corner right here is the 100. In the corner on the right is the 120 minute chart, um, and it's 11.53. So 12.81 was the resistance in the daily. 12.81 was also the resistance in the 10-minute chart. 11.60, the daily support, and 11.42 is the 10-minute support. I don't have anything in the 120-minute chart, but what I am going to say to you is, um, Peaky in the den uh, typed in, uh, he posted, cannabis stocks dropped Thursday after famed short seller Andrew Leff's Citron Research published a reality check for Canadian-based weed company Cronus Group and the rest of the sector, and a new report detailed a federal effort to fight marijuana legalization. So I like it when it was a news event, <clears throat> because I, if it was something else, I would have said, oh, got to be careful. This says to me that, I'll go back to what I said before, if by the end of the day, Cronus can get back some of the selling pressure that was there by the news-related event. After all, that's just a news-related event. That's not going to be a, an immediate thing. Oh, that was August the 30th. Oh, my. <laughs> that's even better. That's why I don't, ever, I don't listen to these things and I don't, don't do the fundamentals in the normal way. So, all right, that's an old one. But whatever it is, you want to see close towards the 12 level, preferably a little higher today. If it's able to do that, it says, whatever the news is, uh, it's fine. It was just maybe a one day thing or half a day thing. But if it starts to close now at 11.59, uh, now it's going to 11.60, someone's listening, 11.61, 11.59, do I have 58? Yep, there's a 58. If, if we're looking at this and all of a sudden by the end of the day there is selling and it goes towards the 11.20s, then I'm gonna to say to you, Protect, protect what you have by at least taking a little bit off and then raising your stop on, remember I'm talking about a half as a core position and something like a half as a trading position. So that half of a trading position, you can take a little bit off if it gets towards 1120, just the security, and you could raise your stop on the other one to maybe 1090, give it a little room. And if, if by tomorrow you really want to see this red candle being repaired with some kind of a green candle, that's going to be important. Another red candle says, you know what, the spike, the two-day spike on the upside was maybe a more news-related help to a bearish phase rather than um, this pullback here, just a mini bearish phase in a, in a trend change to the upside because the weekly chart uh, is holding pretty darn well. The 120-minute chart is given back, but the technicals are very nice. So I'm saying to you that if you can hold on to this position a little longer, the way to do it is to keep a core position and have trading positions. I don't know if that helps you, but that's the way I would look at it, Mark. Okay, it does. Thank you. Thank you for calling, and I hope I gave you a response that works. So. For